minutes. Um, recognize the microphones are terrible and the acoustics are terrible. Uh, thanks so much, and you're now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you to my colleagues for this opportunity to talk about the impact of number of policies on my constituents. Today, I wanna to talk about two issues affecting our residents, medical debt as a factor in credit reports and auto insurance discrimination. Roughly 20%, Mr. Chair, of Americans have medical debt, and it's a tremendous amount of burden. In addition to regularly forcing families to exhaust their savings or cut back on food or clothing, such debt also prevents, and this is the key issue, our residents from meeting their basic needs by marrying their access to credit, meaning access to home ownership, a different number of issues, again, treating medical debt as if they purchased a car and not actually sought health services. I believe this is wrong. Undergoing, Mr. Chair, a medical procedure should never haunt someone financially. No one chooses to be sick. To make matters worse, medical debt has questionable predictive value. It is not necessary to use medical debt to predict a borrower's future credit risk. Furthermore, Debt uh, collectors often rely on inaccurate information, as many of our residents have told us, also pressuring those recovering from illnesses to pay bills they might not even owe. The issue also hits particularly hard in communities like mine, where residents already face challenges with access to credit and have long advocated on behalf of those um, uh, saddled with medical debt. For instance, um, my Restoring Unfairly Impaired Credit and Protecting Consumers Act would prohibit outright um, the reporting of medical debt on consumer reports among those provisions to protect consumers. A medical emergency should not and need, and need not send a family into financial ruin. I've seen it with my families who literally have a loved one with cancer and so forth literally go bankrupt, preventing them, again, from truly being able to thrive in our country. I urge my colleagues to please join me in ensuring that no one, no family has to face such difficulties by, by please supporting this bill and bringing it before this committee for consideration. The next issue I would like to now discuss is about auto insurance discrimination. Auto insurance helps, um, discrimination helps, is keeping my residents in a cycle of poverty. I just, it's really important for folks to know marital status, um, credit score, uh, all of those things should not be factors in whether or not somebody's a good driver. And, Right now, this has been impacting folks um, in, uh, in order to take like a new job or go to school or deal with a medical emergency, one needs to access reliable transportation. And for many of my residents in my district, it's access to uh, a car. Yet Michigan has one of the most expensive uh, car insurance in the nation. So it is outrageous for me that my residents get asked whether or not they're married what kind of education level they have, uh, their credit score, all of it, uh, is really incredibly um, uh, hurtful uh, uh, in, in being put towards the auto insurance rates. This summer, I know Michigan residents saw a 42% fee increase by uh, the Consumer uh, Michigan Catastrophic Claims Association, adding to high fees that are already unaffordable for many of our families. I know when I saw the University of Michigan report showing somebody with a DUI drinking under the influence, but he had a lower credit score compared to someone with a very you know, decent credit score, but not as high, but he had no DUI. The person that had the DUI drinking under the influence was paying three times higher in auto insurance rates than the person that did not have any violation. So we must stop using these non-driving factors in auto insurance rates. So again, I'm really grateful for my amazing uh, partner in this is Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman. We have the Prohibit Auto Insurance Discrimination Act, which would prohibit the use of these proxies like education and zip codes to calculate insurance rates. Again, thank you so much for this opportunity um, to uplift my residents and some of the struggles that they have. And hopefully um, colleagues would work with me on Financial Services Committee on this issues. Thank you, thank you for testimony on important policy matters. And uh, I, I thank you for for making it here for member day, and you're the final testimony of the day. Uh, I'll yield to the ranking member. Thank you very much. Mr. Lee, I want to thank you for your strong leadership in highlighting all the problems with medical debt. And um, I'd like to just get a little advice from you here. Of course, we know how uh, it unfairly ta tarnishes so many consumers' credit scores the way the information gets reported by the major credit bureaus. There's no research that shows medical debt is a good indicator of an individual's credit worthiness. If you get sick and need medical care, that should not affect your ability to take out a loan, renting an apartment, or even getting a job. 
But that's exactly what has happened, given the way our broken credit reporting system works. After working on this issue myself for more than a decade, I was pleased. The national credit bureaus have taken steps to remove some medical debt information from consumers' credit reports. However, much more needs to be done, and I'm pleased that CFPB Director Chopra is taking further steps to address this issue. Mr. Lee, we have not held any hearings in our committee this year exploring this issue in any debt. Do you believe that the committee should hold a hearing with the CEOs of the national credit bureaus and experts on these issues and then look to mark up your bill and others put forward by members of our committee to fix our broken credit reporting system? What do you think? Yes, um, and, and ranking member, as you know, we did actually have the three largest credit reporting agencies before our committee, and many of us were able to ask some of the tough questions that many of my residents are asking, which is even, you know, paid debt. I know the chair and I talked about medical debt and, and his personal experiences of something getting, you know, paid, but it's still showing up on people's credit report. You know, I, th I think... Folks don't realize how uh, incredibly uh, important it is to fix credit reporting. It's, it's literally the access to economic opportunities. So even if you're doing so well and, and but you get sick, again, it gets on your credit report. It impacts literally whether or not uh, you're able to thrive later or whether or not you even get a good loan for a car. Uh, people are now looking at credit reports, uh, ranking member, for employment. Uh, they're looking at it for, uh, you know, folks look to it as some sort of factor in whether or not uh, uh, that's, this person should be, you know, getting a loan or, or for housing or whatever. But again, medical debt, to me, it's not like somebody's like, hey, I'm just going to go and rank up medical debt. They're sick. And sometimes it's, it's actually, but the majority of the time, when you hear folks talk about filing for bankruptcy in our country, a big, huge factor is medical debt. It's somebody in their family or themselves getting, you know, very sick. And again, cancer is one that I hear consistently in my district. Uh, folks that have to, um, you know, pay uh, an exorbitant amount of money because their insurance doesn't cover fully because uh, they're underinsured or not covered as much. Uh, it is the prescription drugs uh, that it continue to pile on, on my residents. And again, they may not have to pay the full amount, but all of it adds up, especially when it takes months and sometimes years to recover from a serious illness. Thank you so very much, and your being here today certainly helps put more focus on the issue, and I certainly will work with uh, the chairman to see if what we can do in terms of the hearings that you're suggesting. Thank, Thank you, you very yeah. much.